222 day, we will talk about XLM and how it is surprisingly dominant in real world asset tokenization. Here is the chief product officer at Stellar explaining how it's not just about tokenizing assets on chain. It is how to create yield off of tokenized assets. Stable coins we're going to see, the more competition there's going to be around, you know, how much yield and how is it how distributed to the users. And so I think this place where we're at right now, where there are a bunch of stable coins and functionally they're doing the exact same thing. I don't think that's going to uh, stay for long. And, you know, people are realizing I made this equivalent for like a checking account earlier. Um, you know, if you're just holding dollars and not getting yield on them, you're effectively losing money. Right. So if you want to be a participant in the on chain economy, you want to have a way to park your money in a way that generates yield. Yield bearing stable coins are the way to do that. And there's going to be a lot of competition with that space. A lot of attention is on real world asset tokens at the moment. In between that and AI, it's probably two of the hottest topics or categories at the moment, and it can attract a lot of hype. The real world asset backed token OM has caught a lot of unfortunate attention recently. And that is mainly because in January 24, it was just about seven and a half cents. And on February 25th, 2025, it peaked at almost $8. And then it had some unfortunate things happen and it is about 25 cents or 40 cents at the moment. And a lot of that is because real world asset tokenization is a very hypey, kind of a category at the moment, it's really hard to determine what these projects and these companies and these tokens and coins are actually backed by. And that was a classic case of just not having any fundamentals there. And here is the real world asset tokens category on coin market cap. And it includes some in here that a lot of people probably wouldn't categorize in the pure real world asset tokenization category, such as Stellar. And that is because the real world asset tokenization of financial products is the not as attractive on the surface opportunity here. Things like treasury bonds, which we will talk about here in a little bit. Stellar is the second largest L1 in terms of real world asset tokenized value after Ethereum with about 470 million in tokenized tr tr treasuries, commodities, and yield bearing stable coins. And that really shouldn't be too surprising because Stellar has actually concentrated on asset tokenization since 2014, which is when they were launched officially. Here is a clip that explains how they were actually one of the first companies on the scene. In 2019, I had been at the foundation for like five months, six months. Uh, and we had our first Meridian, which is our annual conference. Um, and right after Meridian, I saw uh, a, an SEC filing from Franklin Templeton. And in 2019, of no in November 2019, they, they went to the SEC to get approval to build a money market fund on Stellar. They hadn't talked to us. We had no idea. Like, this is the beauty of open source technology. They had found the technology themselves. And so they started building and they got the SEC's permission to be able to move in that direction. We've now obviously spent a bunch of time with them, but Franklin Templeton was the first money market fund to issue and it issued on Stellar. Hmm. So if you just think about your traditional money market funds, you sometimes have checks associated with them if they're in bank accounts, like what we consider bank accounts traditional, and you get yield. You get usually like what they're treasury backed, US treasury backed, so you get yield on them. Well, what Franklin Templeton did as the first player to move to this is they actually put it all on chain and they wanted their books and records to be on chain. They didn't want it to just be like this asset that they still used all of the underlying old infrastructure. They wanted to move it all on chain. And so that's what they did. And the SEC allowed them, at first they had to do training wheels to use the old databases, and then they actually just, and, and Stellar at the same time, and then they got to drop the old databases. So Franklin Templeton's Money Market Fund is, was the first one that was built. It's truly that all the books and records are on Stellar, even though they've issued on other chains, their books and records sit on Stellar. 
And part of the reason for that is that they that Stellar had already had um, clawback functionality, all the things like compliance tools. It was built into the network layer, and so Franklin really took and uh, FT took and used those assets. And so that was the first one they issued officially and publicly, I think, two years ago, and they've been growing that asset the whole time. In 2025, Stellar is trying to 10x their expansion into asset tokenization, and a lot of that has to do with Franklin Templeton and even Wisdom Tree, which I don't really think I've talked a lot about yet at this point. However, I have a lot of really eye-opening, real-world asset tokenization involvement around that topic as well. And a lot of people don't really associate Stellar as an asset tokenization coin. They like to say, well, it's for P2P or it's for banking unbanked. And I have expressed opinions on it a lot. I don't really think that Stellar in particular was announcing their true intentions at the start. Yeah, sure, it started out as a P2P kind of a public facing approach. However, the technology and infrastructure that they were actually creating, and especially after, what was it, 2015, when the current Stellar consensus protocol was actually created, that technology and the functionality on that is not just for peer-to-peer -peer payments. And even if it was, then in the more modernized first world countries out there, peer-to-peer -peer payments don't really exist. It has to be tied in to some kind of an institutional account. And that has to have KYC and it has to have AML and it even has to have clawback in there too. So they have been creating the tools and infrastructure to be capable of handling pretty much anything and everything. While the XRP army, the Bitcoin maxis, and whatever you call those Ethereum people are arguing over what's best for the strategic reserve, nobody is looking at or paying attention to the one token that is gobbling up the real world asset market. Stellar's ecosystem is growing fast in the tokenized real world asset space. Franklin Templeton, USDC Circle, and Wisdom Tree are moving hundreds of millions of dollars onto Stellar's blockchain. Franklin Templeton's real-world holdings grew 29.4% this month, while Circles is up 26.5%, and some others are even catching up to that. While stablecoins and U.S. Treasuries make up the bulk, commodities are starting to show up as well. One thing's for sure, you can talk about it or you can be about it. While others are out here talking about all the things they could and should do, Stellar is out there getting it done. Here is an interesting expansion on that, which I have speculated on a couple of times, especially with velo and xlm uh in regards to the tokenized trade of oil and gas just to be clear stellar is actually involved with a company i believe it's out of the us it could be out of canada however they were actually tokenizing crude oil shipments in pipelines in between canada and the us and i believe that i had a video on that towards the end of 2023 so that has been happening for quite a while now. And here is an example of a person who is pretty well known in the crypto community. A lot of his ideas uh, revolve around like Project Sandman and Ice Nine and stuff, which has to do with the fall of the uh, strength of the USD. And while I don't think that's outright not true, I just don't really think that that's in the cards at this point in time, because as we get more and more stable coins, and as we get more and more regulations here in the US, US denominated stable coins will spread into the rest of the world, and especially ones that create a return on investment and are involved in the tokenization of assets. So he speaks here on how this kind of ties into the bricks will control the world stuff and i just don't really fall in line with that however i can agree that tokenizing real world assets on chain will be a huge opportunity in terms of a generational transfer of wealth here is a rundown of what stellar has on chain right now in terms of assets 
So I don't check this as often as I should, and I honestly probably should. So you've got FTI with 474 mil, USDC at 294, and then a couple other ones under that. Wisdom Tree is one that is expanding a lot, and a lot of people are not really aware of their involvement with Stellar. And especially when you include things like Paxos and Ondo, which have huge ties into Stellar as well, it is really prepared to explode. And it really seems as if we're just hanging on for some kind of action out of Congress, which I'm kind of expecting to not happen as quickly as a lot of others do. So I posted this about a month ago, but one of the points was that a lot of people really cling to the idea that Stellar is for P2P and Ripple and XRP are only for institutions and it'll have a extremely clear cut. And I thought that for a long time as well until I really began to learn a lot more about what Stellar has. And they have just as much, if not more advanced on-chain technology as the XRPL. And they have more provable institutional connections with actual tangible results. And I think that it'll have a lot of overlap. And I think that the quote unquote retail centric concentration has a lot more of an institutional tie than a lot of people think at this point. And for example, you've got FTI and Wisdom Tree creating assets on Stellar, Deloitte and Price Waterhouse Corporation, I think that's what PWC actually stands for, are working with Stellar in terms of auditing. I know about PWC and I know that Apple and Deloitte seem to have more uh, posts here on X, but I know that there's something there. I just haven't looked at that in a while now. So here's an example of that. So you've got real world asset tokenization on FTI, Ondo, Paxos, and Society Generale. That is a French company, which I didn't pronounce right. I tried to learn French once because I worked for a French company and uh, it didn't really work well. So I do have some content coming out on that soon as well. And then in terms of the more infrastructure, institutional end of things, the DTCC, they acquired a currency which was created on Stellar infrastructure. And that got renamed into DTCC Digital Assets either in late 2023 or early 2024. I would have to go check. Um, you also have a lot of ties into Zodia Custody. Copper, I believe, is a custodian type of thing as well. And of course you have IBM and a lots of their hyper ledger infrastructure. So on Ondo, I, I haven't really talked about Ondo a whole lot. It has gotten a lot of attention in the XRP end of things, mainly because of the connections into BlackRock. However, a really interesting thing is that I think he's uh, the C mo or the cfo or the c something i can never remember however he actually came from stellar and he is over at ondo now and speaking of ondo uh they are talking about where they see on-chain finance over the next 12 months and here is their ceo we're gonna launch global markets and ondo chain and so we're gonna get early data on you know what the demand is for um you know tokenized exposure to public equities and you know i think based on what our distribution partners wallets and exchanges are telling us there's going to be a lot of demand and um i think that'll hopefully continue to you know open up the eyes for you know folks in traditional finance to the broader potential beyond stable coins and treasuries for tokenized securities work. And I did talk about Etherfuse a little bit too, 
they are heavily involved with Stellar and they are essentially tokenizing bonds. And it's an interesting post here because Reflector is a Stellar on-chain oracle. I don't really know how to explain that. I'm not an expert on the topic. And it has its own Stellar token called XRF. And here is an example of Ether Fuse as well. Yes, you can tokenize anything, but if it's not really performing actions and returning results on chain, then why actually tokenize it? So you've got things like Etherfuse tokenizing bonds on chain, which return an investment of, I think I saw a post of about 12% at this point. And just as a reminder, here is a guy from Standard Chartered, I believe, who has a ton of a ton of involvement with Stellar as well. He is talking about FTI in terms of their involvement with OKX and Standard Chartered, which is a topic I will talk about here soon as well. And it is just another example of how Stellar was one of the first and how interconnected they actually are in the tokenization of assets.